you a brief story. So I have horses. And one day I took the horses and we went to the beach and we were riding along on the beach and it was so fantastic. And I thought, this is amazing. I'm riding a horse on a beach, right? There's a friend of mine, her, her and I, we went out on the beach having a great time. And so while we're riding along on the beach, I'm thinking in my mind, you, perhaps you've seen these pictures too. I'm thinking about how some people ride out into the water and they're galloping along in the water and it just looks amazing, right? You're just, it's amazing. Okay. So I have this in my mind. I say, I'm going to do that too. And so I start, as I'm riding this horse on the beach, I start encouraging my horse down to the water. She's not feeling it. And, and I'm, I'm saying, oh, it's okay. I'm talking to her and I'm encouraging her down to the water and the waves are crashing and they're making a lot of noise. And I know about horses. I know that they're very skittish by nature. They are prey animals. So basically the waves to the, to the horses and the water washing up on the shore, that's just a big monster to them. And in her mind, she's thinking, uh, Brian, that's not my environment. That's not the realm in which I thrive. Do you want to know why I know this? Because she wasn't trying to go that way. See, naturally, I was encouraging her in a particular way because I wanted that. See, selfishly, I wanted the moment of riding in the water, right? I wanted the TV moment. So I'm encouraging her to do something that's not natural for her. Her natural mind, her natural abilities, her natural makeup said, that's not where I belong. I'm not really, mm -mm, I don't want to do that. <laughs> she didn't want to do that. That was my dream. That was not her dream. So now our dreams were in conflict. Sometimes this is what happens with students, sometimes with, with children and our children. We see what the world is telling us. We see what the educational system is telling us. Your child should be doing this. Your child should be doing that. And we're trying to get them to go that way. We're trying to get this square peg to fit into a round hole. Let's go. Let's go. Let's push them this way. Let's keep on pushing them. And your child is refusing. And, and they're, here's a word that we use with the horses. Your child is bucking. You ever say that? Like, oh, the child is just bucking. Well, bucking is something that horses do when they have reached a point of, of, of having no escape. See, a horse, a prey animal, naturally wants to run forward. Their horses are not designed, deer are not necessarily designed, zebras, they're not designed to go backwards. They are designed in their nature to run forward. When something makes them afraid, they run forward. I tell the children that work with the horses, I say, listen, the place you don't want to be is in front because when they get afraid, they run forward. They're going to get out of the way. They're going to get to a safe place. And then they'll check the check around to see what happened. Okay. But so often we will try to push and push because we have, if we're being honest as parents, we have this narrative in our mind of what is supposed to be. We see it on social media. We hear it on the news. We've heard it from the school system. Children are need to do this. The school system is designed for particular students to excel, not all students to excel, okay? And so when we look at that, we think there must be something wrong with my child. But I was thinking about this. If I gave you a piece of technology that required let's say four C batteries. And so I put that in your left hand, but in your right hand, I give you four AAA batteries. Is there something now wrong with this machine because these batteries don't get it to work? See, is there something really wrong with your child because what is being fed to them doesn't activate them 